to our speaker in just one second. Let me give her the proper introduction because she is so, so superior this year as top coach of the year. You guys, um, you know, she's 2022 top coach of the year. So she ended the year last year, 2021 as top coach. So we recognize her as the top coach for 2022. She's an eight time elite coach. She's a superstar diamond coach. She is a legacy member. If you don't know what legacy member is, it means in all the years that she has been coaching, her cumulative earnings have surpassed $1 million. She joined Team Beachbody in May of 2013. So she's approaching her nine years. Success Club, nothing for her. She achieves Success Club every single month for 102 months in a row, consecutive, helping three new people, at least three new people, get into a total solution every single month. She is also a coach to a Beach Body Challenge finalist. I think she's going to talk a little bit about that. She named her team, you guys listen up, Team Uproar. Yay! I looked up the word uproar because I am a fanatic about language and words and things. And uproar means a disruptor. And that is exactly how she handled all of last year. She was a disruption to the network. And she stayed in the number one spot, I think, almost the entire year. Um, she is from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> All right, let me bring her on, you guys. Angie Belmar, top coach of the year. Woo hey, that was an amazing intro. Cindy. <laughs> I wanted to give it to you all. I think also there's a stat that I'm missing, and that is how many times you've been top coach in Canada alone out of this the Canadian coaches. Okay. Well, many you've been in the top 10 many times. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so Thank nice you. to see you. You had an incredible year. Everybody was rooting for your success. So congratulations. Um, I'd like to just jump right in and talk about, um, when this business kicked off for you. Cause when we launched, uh, in Canada over nine years ago, um, you, you joined, but when did it start to snap into place for you? So it did not snap into place, right? I know that you, you said something about Success Club, like was no problem. It was a struggle in the beginning. So I signed up in May, 2013. So I've been a coach for almost nine years. The one thing that I did right from the beginning was a couple weeks after signing up, I ended up going to Summit. So I know that we talked about, Darren talked about the deadline for Summit Recognition. Summit was huge for me to go to, but not because of the recognition. I didn't even know what it was. I just really wanted to work out with the trainers. I knew Sean T would be there. I was super excited about that. But that was the beginning because that helped so much with my belief. But from there, I didn't do much in my business. Like I wouldn't have been a success starter. I'm just saying. I was super shy. I had no success club points for a couple of months and no rank advancements and I hadn't earned anything. So I made a decision though, a couple of months in that I loved this. And if I was going to do it, I was going to do it right. So what happened was I saw a pair of sneakers. I know this is so random, but this might happen to some of you guys. So I'm going to share this. When I was at summit, it was in Las Vegas. I saw a pair of Nike sneakers that I really, really wanted. And I thought, no girl, you're not getting those until you hit Emerald and Success Club 10. And I actually wrote it in my notebook. I said Emerald and Success Club 5 and I went, no, 10. So that month, that August, so a couple of months after signing up, I hit Emerald and I hit Success Club and I've hit Success Club 10 ever since that day. And that was the beginning. Like Emerald for me was the jump off point. It was the proof that I needed. It was the belief and the momentum that I knew that I needed within me and more than anything, the confidence. So that was really, that was the moment that everything started. I just had to make a decision. But you didn't quit. You just kept going and you just kept getting, giving yourself new goals and new accolades and the very long lanyard that you're going to have at summit with all those ribbons. Um, so I watch your stories and I am just mesmerized and fascinated by how you have navigated on the social media platforms. And 
on the wake up call, I'm doing a lot of problem solution. And when you and I talked about what topic to do for today, um, it was like stories, stories, stories. What are people doing? What are they not doing? And how challenging was 2021 to post stories when when there was a lot of discomfort with 2021, uncomfortable situations. So you can go right ahead into all of your information. Okay, I'm excited about this topic. So I love social media. I love video, especially on social media. This is literally how I launched my business. As a very shy person, I felt safe on Instagram. And whenever I first launched my business, a lot of people were over on Facebook. And I just so happened to kind of go over to Instagram to just share my journey. I felt comfortable over there because people that I knew in my everyday life, like other people, people that I went to school with or family members weren't there. So I felt really comfortable to share my story. And that was kind of how I found my love for social media as a very shy person. I could speak to anybody on my terms. I could be behind my phone or my computer and I could share the way that I want to share. So going into this past year, I definitely had struggles that I overcame. I want to share three big struggles that I hear about on my team that I overcame myself and how I completely flipped that. Now, if you've ever seen a training from me, I am not the rah, rah, rah motivation girl. I know that you guys are motivated. I love to just give the tools. As a new coach, I was that girl that was like, just tell me what to do. Give me steps one through 10 and I promise I will do them, but just give me the good. So that's what I'm going to do today. So the number one struggle that I had in the beginning and that I know that a lot of people struggled with through the past year, through 2020 and 2021 is a lack of viewership on your stories. You might be going on your stories and breathing out just gold and giving your heart and soul every single day. And you've got like three views. I was there. And I want to say that when I did these three things that I'm going to share with you, I increased my views on my stories by a thousand percent. I went from lesser than a hundreds pushing into thousands to let's just thousand percent increase on that. So that to me, like stories are gold for that because you're sharing your authentic self and I'm going to show you how to do that. But first you got to get people looking at your stories. So the number one thing I will tell you, the first thing is to self-assess. You got to give yourself a gut check. If you were to look at your stories as an outside perspective, as a third party person, would you follow you? That's the biggest thing I can tell you. If you are MIA, and I want you to gut check yourself right now. Are you MIA? That would be one. That would be why people are maybe not following you or why you would not follow, follow you. Are you only sharing Beachbody? There is so much more to you than Beachbody. Definitely share Beachbody. I'm going to share, share with you how to do that. But you've got to share the things that make you you. And are you taking the time to create content that you would actually care about? And I'm also going to touch on that. But just self-assess. And I think that that's step one. Just would you follow you? Number two, I want you to determine who you're speaking to. Who is your ideal follower? And this will not only help with feeling shy or overwhelmed or not knowing what to say, but it's also going to help you streamline everything in so that you know that you're really just speaking to one person. And that one person, your ideal follower, I'm going to hopefully blow your mind right now. It's you, BB. It's you before Beachbody. When I'm speaking on my stories, when I'm sharing a post, when I'm sharing anything on my stories, I'm speaking to Angie nine years ago. I'm speaking to Angie nine and a half years ago and where she was, because there's someone out there that is exactly where I was to a T and I would be able to understand them. So I'm not trying to think of how to accommodate everybody. I'm speaking to that one person, which is me before Beachbody. Number three, low engagement. Hopefully you're ready for this. This is how to reset it. If you have a real, let's say you had some views and it just dipped. This happened to me through 2021. And this is what I did. And I hope that you're going to write this down. You are going to go radio silent for 24 hours. I know that this might be hard. I don't want it to be more than 24 hours. This is not a vacation. This is a reset so that you can launch. You are going to go radio silent, no posting, no stories, nothing. It's as though you are not on your Instagram for 24 hours. I still answered inbox messages, but I'm just saying posting radio silence, 24 full hours. You are going to come back at the end of those 24 hours with a freaking vengeance. You are going to come back as strong as you possibly can full force. So this is what I did. I went MIA for 24 hours, shut it down, quiet, nothing. 
that almost like seems to reset something in the stories that, you know, okay, we're gone. And when you come back, you want to come back with something strong. So you are going to do a poll of something that you know that your followers care about. I will give you an example of what I did. Something that was a hot topic that I seem to get a lot of questions about was our, we were building our house and I was trying to choose a chandelier. Most random question in the world, but I just asked which one people liked more, but I didn't just stop there. I kept going with more engagement. So then I did a meter, you know, like the love meter. So then I shared something else. I think something about my dog. That's the other thing that people love about. So the second story back was the meter. The third one was a question. So there's all these different ways to engage on stories, but if you do have really low engagement, you can reset it doing that, but you've got to stay consistent after that. It's not about then going MIA for 24 more hours because then you're just going to mess it up. So those are my three tips for if you have a lack of views and that was something that I struggled with. But the second thing and the second thing that I struggled with that I know that my coaches have struggled with and that I did back in the day was that you feel like you've got nothing to post. We work from, most of us work from home as coaches. We're in our home all day long and we think that it's boring and we don't have anything to share. You've got to get way clearer on what you're going to share, who your audience is, what your audience cares about, and that's how they're going to grow. So my followership and my likes increased from tens to thousands doing this. But the more important part that happened whenever I did this was my comments. And this is about depth. Like, I'm likes and followers is very surface level, but when you can go deep with your audience, and that's to me measured in comments, if you ever want to see someone's true engagement on their Instagram, look at their comments and if they're replying to the comments. So my comments went from, I would say three to seven on average to hundreds. And that to me spoke volumes. That's actual engagement, actual interaction that people are showing up and care about what I'm posting. So the way that I did this is on my stories, I made sure to show up consistently, but number one, I brought people into seven spaces, seven spaces in my own life. I'm going to take you through what the seven spaces are. My home, as boring as you might think it is, bring them into your home. There is a reason why the show Cribs was so popular. People want to see into people's refrigerators and their cupboards and their home. We are, we are weird, strange humans. We love to see into people's lives. Bring people into your home. Bring people into your workout space. That's the second one. Bring people to your dining table. Bring people into your family room. Bring people into your nerd corner. My nerd corner would be the Disney corner, specifically the cocktail Disney corner or the food Disney corner. It's weird, but I learned to, I learned to own it and I, I fly with it and I go with it. And that's what I bring people into. The sixth one is bring people into your challenge group. And the seventh is into your team. And I don't mean this so literally. I just mean, give them a view into these spaces of your life. Just give a little sneak peek daily. So the second thing that I'm going to tell you as to when you don't know what to post about, I'm going to give you a little challenge. I'm actually going to give you a couple of challenges today, but this one might sting. Don't be basic. You got to let go of the boomerangs and the stills. For the next week, I would love for you to just post video only. Show yourself, show around where you're at. No boomerangs, no stills. Do you want to know why? Because it's basic and it doesn't show anything. There's no audio to that. We have no idea what's going on. We, like enough of the, you know, like the cheers, we have all seen it. And what I want you to think about is if you're following someone, you're going through the stories, when do you click off? Usually if they're not sharing anything that deep, right? Boomerangs and stills. So only video for the next week. I know that that might be scary, but you're going to grow from it and you're going to grow your audience. Number three, I want to give you a posting schedule. If you don't know what to post, there are seven different things that you're going to post over the next seven days, and they are each of your spaces. So I went through those seven spaces with you, taking people into your home, into your workout space, to your dining room table, to your family room, to your nerd corner, a little sneak peek into your challenge group and to your team. You're going to post one of those per day. That's your posting schedule. If you don't know what to post, show up in one of those spaces take people around your home every single day. That's the idea of stories is to let them into your life. And hopefully two of those days include a challenge group and a team to let them in on what you're doing in your business. So that hopefully covers what to post, but in terms of the business, it's one thing to post on stories. You know, my challengers are amazing at posting on their stories, but they make $0 because they're not coaches. So when you're sharing your workouts, 
that's great. But just think that, you know, our challengers do that as well. So what sets you apart? So that's what I want to share with you. So if you're seeing no business growth, if you're seeing no success club points, if you're seeing a little bit of a struggle in terms of crickets or people engaging with your interest in your challenge group and your team, hopefully these three tips can help you. Number one, this is sassy Angie speaking. Stop hiding. I don't understand why you would hide. What, what are you scared of? Here is the beauty of stories. When you hide, you are avoiding something that is gone in 24 hours. Stories is amazing for that. So 99% of my weekly invites happen on stories daily. Every single day I invite. You know why? Because they're gone after 24 hours. So when I started doing this, my success, success club struggle, that's hard to say, success club struggle, went from a real push to five people, success club 10, to over success club 100. So that's bringing in five to 50 new customers or coaches every single month by doing this. And that also created the effect of no longer having crickets in my DMs and email inbox, but having interested people coming to me every single day because I was posting the right things on my story. So step number one is to stop hiding and to invite every single day on your stories. Number two, when in doubt, gratitude it out. If you don't know how to share and you feel weird inviting, just share what you love, share what you're loving about your team, share what you're loving about the results in your challenge group, share what you're seeing on your team and in your challenge group and what's making you happy. Share a move that you love that made you feel like a badass during job one today. Like whatever it might be, just share that and share what you're loving. Number three, here's my other challenge for you. I truly believe that job one is one of the best things that has happened to Beachbody. I am obsessed with it. I think Jennifer is amazing. I did my job one workout this morning, week four, finishing it up. Um, but one thing that I challenge myself to do that I think could be amazing for you on stories is to share your weekly results. It is, it's a program where you move the needle so quickly in your results that after week one, I shared my results at the end of week two. And you know what else? It kept me on track. But here's my challenge to you. Not only should you be doing that, but at the end of the four weeks, what if you challenged yourself to have somebody in your challenge group that had enough of a transformation that you could feature them and recognize them. That's my hope for you is that not only are you getting weekly results that you can keep yourself on track with and share those. And there is no better invite than you sharing real progress with your own journey with a program that just launched. But there's also power in recognizing your challengers and showing that you're helping other people get results. So what I love to do is go through my own BOD group and my own challenge group and grab people's results and help them through. And that's really my motivation because I know at the end of the next four weeks, I want to help someone get a good enough transformation and feel great enough about themselves that they want to share that transformation and that I can feature them on my stories. So those would be my three big needle moving struggles that I overcame through 2021. Incredible. I mean, Facebook is just lit up right now because you yes. made it so, so easy, simple to I, the, what something that I wrote down. Don't be basic. No boomerangs. <laughs> when I watch, you know, people on social media or like TikTok, like how long does a trend last before it's like, oh, that is so last year or that is so like we don't do that anymore. The, the, the glasses and the boomerang. <laughs> I mean, it's like when it's hot, it's hot. And when it's not, it's really not. <laughs> so do you have some kind of gauge when you know that a trend has lost its appeal? Yeah, I gauge my own interest. So if I'm watching other people that I love to follow, and if I find myself clicking off because of something, I don't do it because it's Ooh. what I don't like. So therefore, I know that my target audience probably won't love it. Okay. And a few people said that they don't have a nerd corner. So your nerdiness of being a Disney fanatic is not nerdy at all. I mean, that's like, are there some other nerdy areas that you think? I think everybody has a nerd corner. There is something that you are passionate about. The way that I see it is if you were locked in a room for 24 hours and you could only talk about one subject, what would it be? It can be your kids. It can be your dog. It can be home decorating. It can be reorganizing a pantry. It can be anything, but okay. everybody has a nerd corner. Okay. Let, awesome. let the free flag fly. Okay. And a flip side to a nerd corner is your superpower. So it's obvious okay. what your superpower is, but what do you think in the last eight and a half years, you've had to really flex to, you know, develop uh, in yourself to be a better coach. So take it away. 
Um, so over the past nine years, it's been a journey. I, I think it's easy to look at a coach once they've hit elite and done things to just think that it was easy. But starting out, you know, I mentioned this in the beginning that I was really shy. I was also scared of things. I was also so uncertain of myself. And I watched a really cool documentary on Disney Plus. Yes, this is going to be a Disney reference. But on Disney Plus, there's this documentary of how they created the movie, the second Frozen movie. And they talked about this song that's in the movie called The Next Right Thing. And Kristen Bell sings this. And it's really about doing the next thing, no matter how anxious you are or how scared you are. And that would be what I would say my superpower was on the days where I showed up to team calls and there was like, I turned it on and there was zero people on through the moments that were hard, where I wanted to quit and give up to the moments where I was crying on my office floor because of X amount of thing that I don't even remember now that was just so difficult to go through. And just the moments that were just life and difficult. I did the next right thing. I just did one thing. I went and pressed play on my workout. I went and posted something on my social media. It might not have been the most productive day, but I did the next right thing. And every time that I did something a little bit scary, I grew like saying yes to a team call or my gosh, the national wake up call. And that truly shaped the coach that I am today. I I'm like, agreeing like this. And then I, I realize I'm not back into the stream with you. I think that your, um, your advice is so powerful, Angie, because when you first started, yeah, you were shy and you can't, you can't think about posting on social media, all of these personal things about you, but life has changed so much in eight and nine years where we mm -hmm. are posting our nerd corners and we are talking about our vulnerabilities. Um, but what, what made you take action? And, and this is, you know, off script here because people watch the National Wake Up Call and they're like faithful listeners or faithful watchers and they get one good nugget from this call. But what is the tipping point from taking the nugget from this call mm -hmm. and then now sitting down after the call and doing something one step forward? What's the next step? I would say to think long and hard about what does your current life look like and what are you embarrassed or frustrated by? And for me, I was, that was my rock bottom. I was so tired of watching my husband go from, you know, work at, he would leave at 5 AM and come back at 6 PM. So in the dark and in the dark, and he was working so hard. And I just felt like I wasn't contributing to our family. And my biggest goal was to be able to contribute to someone that had not only believed in me and supported me. And that was really the jump off for me because for those first couple months where I wasn't hitting success club and I wasn't growing, I wasn't bringing in an income. I not only wanted to prove it to him, but I wanted to prove it to myself that I was capable of contributing to our little family and to be able to be more than just someone that was floating through life. Woof. <laughs> Gotcha, Angie. Um, you know what? Uh, 2021 was an insane year and you pulled out all the stops. I mean, you were you were head down. You focused on what worked for you. Um, you you had an insane year. Very, very proud of you. Top coach of the year. Um, and, you know, your stories are just getting better and better and better. And I'm sure that if you look back at the first story you did, <laughs> all of these notes that you gave today were violations that you did. Oh, 100%. <laughs> um, but uh, I appreciate you coming on. And really, I took notes because I didn't even have a script from you. So, <laughs> And I love that. I mean, I really, you know, nobody needs a script. If you do what you do and you love what you do, it's natural, it's organic. You don't need a script. This is this is how you work and can't thank you enough. Oh, thank you, Sandy. That means the world. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks again. And I'll see you hopefully in Punta Cana. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Wherever your trips take you this year. All right. We are uh, done with the call today, but you know what? Take a few uh, notes from Angie today and just do the next step. Um, that's what we try to do here on the national wake up calls. We try to motivate you, bring in some things that give you light bulb moments. Um, maybe some things you just go, Hey, I am on the right track. I'm doing that. It's working for me. Keep at it. Um, so we're, we're happy that you're here 
And we will see you here next week. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.